Ladies and gentlemen, today's topic is what are your programming weaknesses? What stops you from being a great programmer? Now, we all have weaknesses. Even Superman has kryptonite that makes him really weak. So if you can figure those weaknesses out, we can improve them and we can become a great programmer and for the better future. Today, we're going to discuss that. We're going to talk about what are the common programming weaknesses people have. Maybe you'll, it'll help you to figure out yours and how to figure out your own weaknesses. Uh, what are the signals? How do you figure out? And then in the end, we can discuss how to mitigate it. So how to uh, fix uh, some of the common weaknesses that we have. And I will personally share some of my weaknesses and how I have worked on some of them and that made me a better programmer and some of the weaknesses I'm still working on. And welcome to Texas Tutorials. So let's first talk about some of the common weaknesses people have. Uh, one of the common weaknesses I've seen is a lot of people are very slow programmers. Okay. Uh, often they're slow because maybe they don't know the technology very well that they are programming into uh, or they are just thinking too much. Sometimes uh, too much analysis becomes your paralysis. Okay, uh, So that's one of the common weaknesses I've observed in a lot of people. Uh, the second weakness is sometimes you're too fast. There are people who are very fast and they make tons of mistakes and create lots of other problems. And that brings me to the third kind, coding without planning without looking at a problem, without thinking, how am I gonna solve this? You just start, start to code uh, as soon as you get the assignment and uh, you go completely wrong way and then you, know, you have to come back to the, the, and then that takes a lot of time, okay? So that stops you from being very efficient. And that also brings me to the, the fourth weakness, which is a lot of times uh, people don't know the fundamentals of whichever language they are coding in. If you are going to solve a problem, you need to focus on the problem, not the language. Uh, because a lot of people are not fluent with the language because they lack the fundamentals. And so when they start coding, solving the problem, they have to solve the problem and solve how to do the coding. So that becomes double whammy and um, they just take a very long time. And I put a lot of people in this category. I've seen people who are working in, in a JavaScript project, React project, and they don't know React very well. And then, you know, they try something, you know, basically it's trial. When you become a trial and error programmer, that's, that should, that I would consider as the biggest weakness. Another weakness is writing a monolithic code. Uh, a lot of people just put everything in one giant file and it's very long. And what happens is that you need to, break down some of the pieces that are uh, commonly used. You need to break down your components into digestible small pieces so you can understand what's going on. Another weakness is using the same data structure to do everything. I know a lot of people just use arrays for everything, even if even if there's a right data structure available for that that language, which solves the unique problem, they'll just use one data structure. A lot of people just use arrays for doing everything, okay? Uh, and that could create some issues in a speed wise. Another weakness is not writing enough tests. If you write some code, make sure you write some unit tests or end to end tests, whatever you need to write to make sure that you protect against regression. Another mistake uh, a lot of people make is not writing a lot of comments or uh, whenever there is a complex logic in your code, and if you don't describe what that is, or if you use some, some hack, which you had to use at that point, but you don't put some comment next to it, say, why did you use it? Or uh, you're gonna fix it later on or something like that. Uh, that's, that's a huge mistake because sometimes you would forget your own logic. And after a long time, if you look at it, oh, I, I don't know why I did that. And on that note, a lot of people don't write uh, meaningful variable names. What happens when you don't write meaningful variable names? If you just use I and J's and K's for everything, then uh, you don't know what's going on in the code. And sometimes it's so confusing. And you can accidentally use the same variable again somewhere. 
uh, if you're not scoping your variable correctly and you can create problems. Another common mistake is uh, people make simple things very complex. If you are given to build a bike and if you build a scooter or a car, then you already made it very complex, which was not needed. A lot of people have that issue where they just can't help themselves, right? Uh, it's just the, something innate in them that uh, wants to make grand things and then they suffer the consequences because when you do that, you're obviously gonna take a lot longer time and then, and that will result in slow development process. Now let's talk about messy code. I know there are a lot of messy coders out there who don't uh, use right indentation or leaves tons of space between the, the two logic and that not only looks ugly, which it, it does, uh, but also it confuses other people who are reading your code. Another common mistake a lot of people make is um, when they need help. Let's say if you get stuck on something and you tried yourself a lot of, uh, a lot of different things and things are not working out for you and you have really, really close deadline and you need to finish in, in time. So you are struggling, okay? Which, is, which happens, right? I have struggled many times. Uh, but at that point, you need to be willing to ask help you know, go ask somebody. A lot of people don't do it and they just suffer the consequence because either they're too shy to ask for help or they, they think that they, they, other people are gonna judge them uh, for asking help. I would say if you are stuck and if you try your best, make sure that you try your best to find this solution. And when you go to somebody, you, you need to explain that I've tried this, 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 nothing works. You're not gonna look stupid. And the opposite spectrum of that is a lot of people uh, will just ask for help without actually looking at the problem. Uh, they're, they're, I've seen people who just, as soon as they, they see a problem, they just ask somebody without trying yourself, right? Uh, and if you keep going to other people and disturbing them without actually trying to solve the issue, uh, that's not nice either. And you're not gonna learn anything uh, by doing that. Okay, so the next one is, a lot of people cannot do it. We are all engineers and sometimes engineers cannot estimate the work. If your manager comes to you and asks you, uh, I need this done, how long is it gonna take? Uh, a lot of people just look at the work without even understanding what, how much work is needed, they'll just throw some numbers out. Uh, it'll take th three days or four days or something like that. What they are not looking at is uh, the detail. What is the complexity? If I get stuck, do I have enough buffer to, you know, to compensate that? Uh, so a lot of people don't do that and they end up giving estimate either too, too low. And then when that date comes, they don't have a product ready or the code ready, they're gonna get in trouble or it looks bad. Uh, it's, it's always good to understand how, how to estimate stuff. And if you're put in that spot to estimate, and if you don't know, just say, can I get back to you? Let me look at it. People understand. Okay, so now it's time to think which one of weaknesses that you have. And um, I'm gonna tell you mine and what are the things that I, I've done uh, later on. But first, let's recognize how to recognize your weakness. Okay, I've told you the list of weaknesses. And this is just a short list. There may be probably way more things uh, can be added into that list, okay? Which you can tell me if, you've, if you feel I missed something, okay? Uh, send me a message. So one way to identify your weakness is keep your ears open. When somebody says that, that you know, you have a habit of doing this, always listen. Don't, don't just fire back and say, no, I don't think I have this issue. Would you just listen? Okay, let me think about it. And I just uh, analyze it. Do you really have this issue? You may or may not have it. The other person may be just uh, say, you know, saying to, to make you look bad, but he, could, he or she could be telling the truth. So you need to listen, you need to analyze it, figure out if you really have that issue or not. And if you think that you have that issue, write it down and try to find a solution. A second way to spot your weakness is, let's say when you do a code review, if you notice that there are lot, lots of comments people are asking you that you should not do this, you should do this, go through your code review and you can find all the traces of all kind of issue that you're producing. Another way is uh, to look at the peer reviews. 
right? End of the year, they do a review uh, where people anonymous, anonymously or, uh, you know, sometimes they can say, oh, Bob said this about you, right? Now, if you and Bob are not friends, uh, you can look at that little sus- with a little suspicious. But oftentimes, when somebody says in my peer review, I pay notice. I said, okay, uh, if two people said something, then it has to be, there's a, there, there must be something true in that. So I try to make a note and try to fix it. Okay, so now that we looked at the, uh, the some of the issues and ways to identify it, now let's look at some of the mitigation strategy. How do we fix these weaknesses? And I'll tell you some of my example, how, how I fix some of my weaknesses. Maybe you can follow that. Recognizing that you have a problem, that's a first step into fixing the weakness. I think if you don't recognize it, then you can't fix it, right? So I think that is a big step. Uh, then fixing it, it becomes very easy. Some problems you can fix, some you cannot. One of my biggest problem was memory. Uh, something that is innate. I, I, I have a very low short-term memory. Uh, let's say if I'm working on a project, if I go on a vacation for, let's say, two weeks, come back, I would, I would lose half of the information of what I've written. Uh, so also, if, I'm, if I context switch between two projects where I'm coding, it takes a little bu- time for me to actually warm up on the second projects. Uh, uh, so to fix it, uh, I, first of all, I, I do lots of comments in my code, or I would write down a lot of things. Okay, this file does this. This is overall logic, so I keep a lot of documentation, so just in case if I get lost, I have all of it. Also, I, I started playing a lot of memory game, which will help me uh, remember things. So it basically open up your brain by just playing game. There are tons of games out there that you can play, and I figure out how to do that. Now, I'm much better than before. Another uh, weakness I have, I, I can get easily diverted. So let's say if I'm looking for a, a problem, Let's say I uh, some coding issue, and I start Googling about this issue, and I, I find some interesting article about something, something related, but uh, it's not about the problem itself. I would get sometime go deep into it, and then that leads me to something else, which is more interesting, and I'll just start reading that, and then just in a half hour I realize, oh man, I I went in there to to look for a problem, but I've I opened up this five different tabs, which is completely different than what I what I was looking for. And that was eating up a lot of my time. So what I started doing is, as soon as I find something interesting, I, I have a, like this, I have this document where I just take the URL and just dump it in there uh, for the future. So at least my mind feels that, okay, I'm not ignoring that. Uh, at the same time, I'm saving time. Another issue I have is spelling. Um, even when I'm when I'm making video uh, for for this YouTube channel, sometimes you know I type my variable incorrectly. So let's say if I have a variable called uh, my dog's name, and here when I when I spell it, when I try to use that variable somewhere, maybe I misspell it or uh, the instead of capitalize it, I don't uh, lowercase or something, and then suddenly it's undefined, and then it looks really bad especially when I'm live coding. In my personal code, it just, it's fine. I, it may take me a little bit longer uh, to code, but it's fine. But when I'm doing live, code, live coding, it becomes very difficult. Okay, so that's it, uh, folks. Um, I hope you, you know, you can identify some of the weaknesses that I've listed and maybe try to try to mitigate it. And if you have some questions or if you think that you have some one, a particular weakness, and you don't know the answer to that, send me a message and maybe I'll, I can help you with that. Um, maybe you have an answer, maybe I don't, or maybe I can find out the answer. But in any case, I, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you did, please like, <laughs> don't forget to like. Like, uh, subscribe and provide a nice comment. And you can translate this video for me. Uh, the information is in the description.